Today I'm here at the biggest guitar factory in Ireland. We're here at Emerald Guitars, Donegal, and we're going to do a factory tour. I've never done this on camera before. So I'm here with Alistair Hay, CEO, owner of Emerald Guitars, and Alistair is going to show us how you make an emerald guitar. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you around our process and uh, as you know like everything we do is a little bit different um, you know everything we, we build is from carbon fiber so uh, so we're up here in the, this is the the main room where we uh, cut all the carbon fiber we cut all the veneers and uh, so this really is the is the starting point for all the materials um, this is equivalent to the wood store for uh, you know for most guitar companies um, but uh, so the first thing we always do for, for a guitar is uh, we start off with the veneers and if you've been on our website or on our 3D builder you've probably have seen that one of the, the key things that we do is we use very exotic wood veneers and um, because all we, everything we do is made with carbon fiber but we needed to find a way to bring something interesting into a touch of, of classic guitar yeah so it's you know bringing that beauty so that every guitar is unique you know rather than every piece of carbon is consistent which is a beautiful thing in itself gives us great consistency but uh, but we'd like to bring uniqueness into it as well so uh, so behind us here we have um, uh, a library of, of some of the most exotic veneers really in the world and um, I think we have maybe about 50 or 60 different species in here and, uh, and the stuff that we've sourced over the years and uh, and the cool thing about it is every single piece that's in here that I'll show you um, is uh, is catalogued and uh, and visually available in our 3D builder. So it's, it's the real stuff on the builder. It's the real stuff on the builder. So we'll, we'll take a walk in here. So there's all kinds of unusual and interesting things and you know the kind of stuff that we put on the front of a, an acoustic guitar you're never going to normally see on the front of an acoustic guitar. You might see interesting woods on the back but uh, but normally it's very limited. Um, but uh, so we have like we have some redwood burl, some beautiful flame maple here, uh, kawazinga. Uh, what else have we got? Some beautiful Clara walnut. But uh, I'm just going to pull a piece just literally at random. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is the sort of thing you know, there's a beautiful piece of Clara walnut with uh, some amazing detail on it. But uh, but every piece is catalogued, and numbered, and photographed, and then that photograph is what you see on the 3D builder, and you can place on any guitar. So that's just sort of the starting point. So we'll have uh, an order that comes in from a customer, we'll find that piece, we'll match it up to the design and, uh, and put it through. But, um, but yeah, some really interesting and exceptional stuff, you know, and I, I love to find things with really cool patterns and, uh, and then we book match them, like this, oh, uh, wow, what is that? this uh, redwood burl and um, yeah, so there's really some very interesting pieces and to say then you get to to take the piece like that and uh, and then see it visually on a guitar in conjunction to all the different colors and this is a uh, flamed redwood burl um, so that that's the fun part of it you know and it's kind of a passion of mine to to find the most interesting things that we can possibly get um, you know, beautiful figured mahogany and nature's amazing you know carbon fiber is incredible in terms of its structure but uh, it's hard to beat the beauty of, uh, of natural wood. Um, I'll, I'll take you and I'll show you some of the other stuff on this side. This is Royal Ebony. And uh, I absolutely love Royal Ebony. Beautiful stuff. And as you can see, it's, it's really thin. Every piece is 0.6 of a millimeter. So it's been sliced off a tree, almost like a cheese slicer. You know, they, they slice these very thin sheets. And, uh, and then during our process, we'll sand most of that away. So by the time just left it's the finished, there's, there's literally probably only about 0 0.3, 0 0.2 of a millimeter of, uh, of actual wood left. Wow. But it gives us a, that natural beauty. And, uh, and then we have all the, the all regular the structure of the, of the carbon. Yeah. So, uh, so that's the starting point. Um, another one of note is this uh, spalted Chen Chen. Amazing color and iridescence. Oh yeah. And uh, these all go. And I probably have uh, put that in the wrong place. But so uh, yeah. So that's our veneer. So uh, yeah. So we showed you the veneer, um, and that's the you know the, the top surface on probably about seventy percent of the, the guitars that we do have a veneer on top. Uh, but a hundred percent of them have carbon fiber in them. Um, so uh, so this is carbon fiber. 
and um, and this is a a piece um, that's cut to go on the top of the guitar and uh, and carbon fiber has no real strength to it before it's properly processed it's just a fabric you know it just looks like something you can make a shirt out of and um, we buy it in in rolls and uh, we cut it up into to different layers so you can see on the wall all the different templates and uh, so we we cut a lot of the material by hand we've also got a, a digital cutting table that we have behind us here uh, that we can cut with as well but a lot of it is hand processed and uh, we have all different templates for for different layers and different areas of the guitar and uh, there's multiple layers that are put into the guitar and um, that's what gives it its strength and that's what gives it a strength and also what we can use to to alter the tonality of the guitar oh, okay. so in the same way as with uh, bracing on a wooden guitar um, you're altering the you know the vibrational patterns and the stiffness of the guitar top we do that with carbon so uh, so it could be anything from from two layers to eight layers in different areas on the top it's not just all uniform it's oh. uh, it's all with a gradient but when you look at it you know if you even reached inside you mightn't even feel that because it's quite a subtle difference in thickness mm. uh, but uh, but yeah there's quite a lot going on there in terms of the the layup where we position materials but the really great thing about carbon fiber and how we build a guitar is uh, is the material is very consistent and um, that consistency allows us to, to create a, a formula or a recipe. And once we've got that recipe of you know the, the amount of material we put in, where we put it, then every guitar is the same from one to the other. You Very know, consistent. so with, with wood, every piece of wood is slightly different. Um, but uh, but with carbon, we get that uh, that great um, consistency across. So uh, so that's a, a really nice part of what we do. So it's so up here. It's almost like a a tailoring job. You know, you're cutting fabric. Uh, but then we go downstairs and then we put it into a mold. And that's where it turns into the structural carbon. That's where it, it becomes a, 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 ri a physical rigid guitar. Um, so I'll show you a little bit downstairs. Some things I can't show you. We have some trade secrets, uh, but, uh, but I'll show you as much as I can. So, uh, so we're down here now in the, in the molding room and this is really where the guitar starts to come to life and, uh, and we, we put it all together. So, uh, so here we've got uh, the top of a a mold for a guitar and uh, we use a two-piece molding system so there's a mold for the back and sides and then uh, a mold for the top so uh, so what we're doing here is we're just laying in all the different layers of carbon and at this stage we're still just putting in um, dry carbon fiber you know it's just that fabric that has no strength to it um, but whenever we put all the different layers in then we close that mold up a uh, very unique process that we'll not talk about too much uh, but basically we inject resin into that mold and uh, and then whenever that resin has cured that gives us a rigid solid guitar uh, puts everything together but you you had asked me earlier about um, about the neck of the guitar so inside the neck of a guitar is uh, is a core and um, so it's not a hollow molding inside um, what we've got here is an epoxy foam core inside that's been wrapped with carbon fiber and again still you know dry fibers no strength to it, uh, but becomes extremely strong whenever uh, the resin goes into it. Um, but we also put a truss rod in, and um, a lot of people think, well, carbon fiber is so strong you wouldn't even need a truss rod. And that's true to an extent. We can make a, a neck very, very rigid. In fact, we actually have to make a guitar a little bit less rigid um, to allow fiber. for adjustability. So we want a, a neck to be able to move. And uh, so inside here, is a, is a truss rod that's built in and that truss rod is important for just really getting the, the perfect setup because you don't want a neck to be perfectly straight you want a neck to have the the right amount of relief for the the right type of strings that you're using different string gauges will uh, have a different vibrational arc and uh, it's very important that that you can adjust the neck we couldn't do a pro pro or plaque process without the adjustability of the truss rod so uh, so every guitar that we build, we, we adjust the truss rod and just tweak it to get it perfect. One of the things that are, is out there about carbon is people think, well, it doesn't need a truss rod, but... But it does, to get the right set. Perfect playability needs a truss rod. It doesn't matter what the material is made of or the guitar is made of, but every guitar needs to be able to play well. So I'll show you a guitar that was made yesterday. Um, these, uh, this is the, the batch of guitars that were released out of the molds last night. And um, you know what you're seeing there in a in a mold is uh, is is basic raw carbon, and then 
you've got a, a material that's uh, incredibly strong when it comes out. You know, this is literally so strong. <laughs> I can put all my force on it. I've never done this on camera before, but uh, oh my God. but I can stand on a guitar and uh, and I won't break it. So that's how confident we are in the strength of a carbon fiber guitar. That is so impressive. So you can see there's uh, whenever you see it in its raw form before it's painted, you actually can can see a little bit more about how it's constructed. Uh, but all the layers of carbon, the the overlap. And, uh, and join across the sides of the guitar and uh, and it creates a seamless form you know there's no there is no joins uh, there's no join between the neck and the body it's all one, one piece, piece together. so you know this area here is as strong as this area here and uh, so that creates the strength but it also allows the, the sound to resonate through the whole instrument um, you know so um, whenever you have no joints you don't have any any area that's going to stop the uh, the resonance and the, the vibrations going through the whole guitar. Okay, so uh, after the molding process, then uh, then the guitar comes in here. So after it comes out of a mold, and uh, and this is a this is a harp guitar. Um, it's uh, it's coming out of the mold with uh, the join lines, and it needs just a lot of work, you know. So this is a pretty rough emerald at this stage, and uh, we need a lot of refinement on it. So uh, so this is our prep area. And really in this whole area, it's where we'll uh, start and sand on all the guitar, prepare all the, the edges, prepare the fretboard, add the frets. And really it's, it's doing all the sort of um, guitar parts. the guitar parts of it, really. Ma make it into a guitar. But, um, but as you can see, after it comes out of the mold, you know, we've got a, a physically finished guitar. And, uh, you know, so the whole body is all in one piece. The neck's all in one piece, the headstock. And uh, there's a protective layer over the top of the veneer on this. It's uh, a spalted Chen Chen veneer on here. And that all has to be removed and the whole surface has to be refined. So, um, so you can see there's a good bit of work, but, uh, but you can see how the, the guitar is starting to, to take shape at this stage. So um, we, we work out of uh, different booths. So every, every process has a different booth. So this is the, the first booth that uh, we start in on every day and uh, that's where we sand all of the join lines uh, it's where we put on the fretboard surface and uh, I can show you actually the fretboard surface so on the on the surface of the fretboard we uh, we machine the the top of the carbon fiber and there can be a little bit of shrinkage as the carbon fiber cures so while it's molded to you know pretty high tolerance, it's not perfect. So we machine that just to a perfect surface, and then we uh, we put a layer of unidirectional carbon fiber on the top of that. So um, so it's a very thin layer of carbon fiber, but uh, that's what gives us the the beautiful unidirectional finish. It almost looks like ebony. So it is carbon fiber, but all the fibers just all run one way. Um, so it looks like a wood grain. So uh, so we glue that onto the surface in this area, and uh, it's sort of the it's really about the only component that's added to the guitar after molding. Uh, everything else is done and during the molding carbon. process. And it's still carbon. So, uh, so from that, we're doing the prep board in there. Uh, we bring it into this station where we do our fretting. Uh, there's nobody actually working in there, but it's a pretty conventional process. We're cutting frat slots, putting in stainless steel frets. Everything we do is always stainless steel frets. Um, you know, so there's no use in making a guitar that's going to last. For 200 years and uh, frets that are going to wear out in five years so um, so stainless steel frets is just across the board uh, the best way to go for us and um, so they're they're put in there the one thing that we do is a little bit different is uh, we cut a slot that's uh, slightly oversized and we bond the the frets in uh, with the glue uh, carbon fiber is a really hard material so it's hard to get the tang to just bite really well into the fret slot so we, we glue them in and that works really well and uh, really transfers the energy um, really well into the guitar and it's something actually it's not maybe talked about it's just the importance of, of bedding frets properly into a fretboard um, you know we see a huge difference if a, if a fret is not properly glued in and seated properly you know you really can get a, a much deader note so uh, so getting that really strong bond there is a very good thing you know so that's a good thing for people to check sometimes if you actually if you have a guitar and tap on them with something metal and uh, if you hear a dead spot you know that that's a fret that's not seated properly 
So that's a good tip for all your guitar players out there. So uh, so in here we're um, we cut on a machine all the carbon fiber components, all the bridges. Um, so the bridges that uh, that we add afterwards, they're uh, they're all made from solid carbon fiber, and uh, we mold them on our CNC machine here out of a solid billet of uh, carbon fiber. So this is a sheet that's made up of, and this is probably about 40 different layers of carbon fiber. And uh, so it's a very, very strong, very solid. And this all starts like the material that we saw upstairs. It's just like a Just a layers, yep. Layers of that fabric that are laid down and, uh, and made into this very, very high quality sheet. And I must have said, very expensive sheet. <laughs> These are uh, super expensive, but um, but it's worth it. So in here, this is where we're sanding all the, the surface. And uh, so there's a lot of sanding involved in just trying to perfect the surface and rectify the, the surface of the guitar. Um, the, after it's sanded and shaped, everything goes in then to the spray booth for a coat of clear primer. Then it comes back out here for more sanding, uh, more filling, a more rectifying, sanding. and then back into the spray booth for painting. But, uh, but that's what it takes to, to get that perfect, beautiful surface. So in this section, really, it's uh, kind of getting to more conventional guitar processes. You know, it's, it's painting and polishing and, um, you know, done very similar to what any other guitar company would do, uh, with a couple of exceptions. And, and probably the biggest exception is, is actually how we're able to hold the guitars. Um, as you can see, whenever we're working on the guitars, we, we put them all in this rotisserie. And uh, it's a great way we can hold it from the front and back. It gives us access to the entire guitar. But if you were to do that with a wooden guitar, you'd probably break the neck off. Um, but uh, we've got that great freedom with carbon, it's so strong that it allows us to do that. So I guess that in itself is a testament to the strength of the neck of a carbon fiber guitar. Um, so, uh, so in here we have, uh, we have two spray booths. The, the one on the left is, uh, is used for priming uh, and the, the, the first layers of clear coat that go on. Um, so we prime the guitars, we put multiple layers on just to perfect the finish and then that's all sanded down. Um, then the guitars come into the secondary booth which is where we do all the, the paint finishing and uh, that's where all the, the different colours go on, all the high gloss finishes and, uh, and that all happens in there. And, uh, and then these guys put the hours in on perfecting the surface. All the hand sanding. Yeah, all the hand sanding. So a lot of sanding happens around here. Um, so whenever a guitar comes out, you know, even we get a, a beautiful finish just straight out of the spray booth, we still have hours and hours of work to put into a guitar just to, to really get that perfect finish. So, uh, so typically these guys will spend you know, maybe four or five hours on every guitar um, just perfecting the surface and, and trying to get that just to its optimum. Perfect. And uh, we take it down through about five different layers or different grades of, of sandpaper and sanding. And, uh, and then we have uh, a two-step polishing process um, where uh, we polish in our, uh, our polishing room in here on, the, on our, our, our pedestal polishers. Uh, and then we also have a uh, small machine polishing then just to take all the little fine marks out at the very end. So, uh, so, so a lot of time spent on the finishes of these guitars. Pretty time-consuming process. You know, um, in a lot of ways, molding the guitar is the easy part. You know, it's uh, it's everything that comes after that that, that takes the time. You know, and, and people ask us, you know, why is a carbon guitar so expensive? Well, you know, there's the expense of the carbon fiber, but it's everything else that we do that you know that everybody does on high-end guitars that make high-end guitars so expensive. It's the cost of the labor, it's the cost of the components. You know, the, the cost of the, the the tuners that we use in one guitar is maybe as expensive as what some cheap guitars might be out there, you know, so everything we do is high end, everything we do is quality, but, but labor is the key, you know, as you can see around here, our guys, are, you know, everybody's working hands on, it's a hands on process, and uh, there's, there's no substitute for that. So where are we now, Alistair? Uh, yep, yeah, so now we're up in the, in the setup room, and uh, so this is actually the, the latest part of the factory that we've just completed, we only moved in here probably four or five weeks ago. And um, yeah, so this is really where a guitar comes to life. So we bring the, the guitar after polishing, comes up in here, and this is where we start to put on the, the tuners. We uh, put all the pickups in, it becomes put the guitar. strings on, and it becomes a guitar. So, uh, so that's where the first notes of the endless, countless notes that are gonna come out of that guitar actually are heard. And you do five a week here, or five, five a day. Five a day, five guitars a day. And, uh, and as you'll see as you walk around the whole place, you can see there's a lot of space. 
Um, you know, like up in here is uh, is being designed for 12 benches. Currently, we use two, and uh, and the reason for that is uh, we have an expansion plan. We we build five a day, but the factory has been designed for for building 25 a day. So uh, so we have some some high ambitions and uh, and a plan over the next sort of five six years to to really scale up and, and fill this entire factory out. So uh, so come back in a few years time, you'll see a different a different factory space. But um, yeah, so five guitars every day. Uh, we have two setup, uh, two um, setup technicians, and uh, and they put all the components in. Um, but uh, but after that, we still have a lot of work to do on the guitar just to to perfect it. Um, so whenever we put all the strings on and uh, the components on, then we take it into our plec room, and uh, and that's where. The, the real magic happens just to really dial it in and perfect it. So as I said, uh, whenever the, the guitar gets the strings on, we still have a lot of work left to do. And, uh, and really, almost the most important is getting the setup right, you know, because anybody can make a box with strings on it, but uh, having those in exactly the right place is, is critical. And when it comes to the guitar, there's a lot of different parameters that are important. Um, you know, yes, there's the tonality of what comes out, and that's, you know, how you built the structure of the guitar, but then the playability is, is dictated by uh, by the, the type of strings you're putting on, the action on the the, the guitar, the neck relief, um, the curvature and radius of the fretboards, the perfection of the one fret to the next, um, you know, the height of the bridge, the height of the nut. And all um, of those have a huge impact. All of those have a huge impact, and um, and I suppose it's a it's a, a science that is very very misunderstood in the guitar world you know people think you just you know adjust the truss rod if you want to make the the action higher or lower there's a lot more to it than that um, or take up and down the saddles really it's it's a conjunction of getting the, the right saddle height the right neck relief with the truss rod uh, for the right string gauge for the specific playing style that somebody's looking for and, uh, and that's a lot of things to try and put together in one person's head and, um, and we can't physically do it to the same extent as what the plex process can do. Um, so, uh, so we invested in a plex machine, um, I think maybe two and a half years ago now. And, uh, and Jerry maybe can tell you a little bit more about what he's doing over there. Um, he's the, the main guy. Okay, so basically what I'm doing here is um, I'm going to scan the guitar whenever it's under full licks or string tension. And what that does is that gives us an idea of exactly what way the neck is, if there's any twists, if there's any little things that we can't see. Um, it scans it under tension. It measures the height of the fret to one thousandth of a millimeter. And then what we're able to do is we're able to do a plaque profile. And what that means is um, I can see the neck here and I can see exactly what has to be adjusted on the neck. And at that point, and I can then I can then program the machine to do exactly that, and um, it comes off the machine. And there's a little bit of like sort of handwork that I do on the bench afterwards. But basically, what the machine is doing is it's doing the most accurate fret dressing that you can ever get. More accurate than any human. More accurate than any human. One thousandth of a millimeter. And I don't care if you're the best in the world, you can't get it this good. This is now on perfection. It really is. It's really good. And um, so what it's doing now is it's, it's just doing initial scan and then what happens then is it's actually in the machine, then I can take the strings off and the neck will move whenever you take the strings off. And then what happens is it will be re-scanned with no tension on the neck. So then we know exactly what way the neck is moved and then we can adjust that in the machine so that whenever we put the tension back on again, You've got perfectly level frets. So we've got a scan here now. I'll just give you a quick look. So here, um, the first thing we can do is we can check the truss rod. So we can see the neck relief. Now we've got a gradient of two, which is good. So that means that I can now work on this. So I close this and it'll bring me this screen. When, what this screen does is this goes through each, in, each individual string and you can see where the fret work is. Now this is a you know, it's been it's been fretted really well because there's not very much here. There isn't really any like sort of buzzing anywhere on these on that high E string, or indeed on the low E string. There's I mean there's no. So this is a good neck to start with, but what the machine's going to do now is it's going to fine tune this. It's going to fine tune the fret dress. So if you look here, 
um, the profile is what we want, and that's a green line, okay? The orange line there is where it's at. So what I can do here is I can adjust the neck relief, or adjust the neck fall off, sorry. And I can bring it down here. So what we're, so what we're looking at here is four thousandths of a millimeter on the thirteenth fret in order to make it perfect. So we can do that across the entire fingerboard. So we can take it out at this side. And we're talking thousands of a millimeter removal. Almost nothing. Almost nothing. But you do it to what the machine tells you to do it, and it makes a huge difference. This is the smallest thing that makes the biggest difference, you know. And the machine then does that, it, it adjusts the frets too. Well, it's now scanned under tension. Whenever we take the tension off, the neck will move. But the machine will know how much the neck has moved. And then it'll adjust the cutting at that okay. point. So um, incredibly accurate. Oh it's 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 really something else. You know, as you can see that that really allows us to get into very, very fine detail on the frets. You know, it's just, just taking that tiny little hair off the top of the frets, but it's doing that consistently over the whole fretboard that, that just really gives that perfection. A huge impact in the overall playing of the yeah, very much so. But it, it's still only as good as the person that's working it. You know, so Jerry's been doing guitar setups for you know, 25, 30 years. Uh, he knows his way around the guitar setup. And he, he was a skeptic. He took a bit of convincing you know, to try and move from hand processes into a machine. Um, but when you have somebody who really understands where it needs to get to, that's when they can use the machine and, and utilize it to its, its best. You know? so, uh, but yeah, we, you can, if you were handed two guitars that one had been played and one hadn't been, uh, you can feel the difference, we can tell. Um, and it just allows us to take the action down that little bit lower and still be buzz free. And that's another and, part of um, what adds to the premium nature of these. Absolutely. You know, and it's, it's not a fast process, you know, and you asked earlier, does it speed up or, or process? It actually doesn't. Um, you could probably do a hand fret rest quicker than, than the plaque can do it. Uh, but this is more accurate. But this is more accurate. Yeah, so uh, so this is sort of the end of the line. Um, you know, all the guitars have gone through the process. And, uh, and then they come down here and uh, they sit in these racks. Stephen will do quality check on them. And, uh, and then they get boxed up and ready to ship out. And, uh, and anybody that, that follows our stuff online or our YouTube channel will probably know this spot because we, this is where we do our shipping videos. Uh, so one of the things that I really like to do every week is, uh, is every guitar that we, um, that we build, uh, we do a video just showcasing all the guitars. So every week we do this shipping video. So every guitar that was built the week before, um, we, we just talk about where it's going to around the world, who it's going to and what the specs are. So it's kind of a nice thing to, to do. Yeah, it personalizes uh, it. Yeah, it's coming from the manufacturer to you. And also, do you know what? It's For us, it's nice to see the guitars sitting together in a collection. You know, So as you walk around, you'll see all the guitars in, in different stages. Uh, but whenever you see a rack of guitars um, you know, like this, and you know that that's what has come through the week before, you know, it's, it's really rewarding. Mm. You know, you get to see them as a collection, you get to see the variety. And uh, so personally, I enjoy doing it. And um, so in here, what we were doing yesterday, we were filming some stock videos. And um, I'm very much, we, we're a company that exists online. We don't sell through stores. Everything we do is a, a direct or consumers. Um, so, um, so yeah, we do a lot of video content. Um, so here we were doing a, some stock video. So I pulled, um, 50 of my favorite guitars from the 310 that we currently have in stock and uh, we were setting them up in these racks here just to, to do some walk walkthroughs and you're so, not uh, just a stock company by the way you, you make custom guitars as that's kind of your your main build it's, it's well i suppose everything we build a stock is custom mm -hmm. so we build custom guitars for stock uh, but then if you want to build a custom guitar that is your choice custom guitar then you go to our 3d builder and uh, and that's been really a revelation for us uh, it's been a huge thing back during covid when you know all we could do is reach people through online uh, we set about this mammoth project to to build a 3d builder and uh, and we we come up with a, a pretty amazing result um, I, I would like to challenge anybody to tell me there's a better one online by another guitar company so I, I think ours is the best and maybe some others will, come, will say differently so I, I'd be keen to hear that but what it does is it allows you to visualize every guitar there's 25 different guitars on there that are all uh, full 3d rendered 
Um, so you can get in there, you can tweak and move and zoom in and zoom out. So you can see every single ergonomic feature of the guitar. Uh, then on top of that, you can start to choose all the different features. So you can add in uh, the different colored carbons, uh, the different veneers like we saw, saw at the beginning. You can add that on and move it and adjust it to exactly the right position that you want on the top. Uh, change the hardware color, change all the different pickups. And as you change the pickups, it'll change all the controls and things that are on the guitar. So everything's visual. Uh, so it gives you a really good visual understanding of what it is you're getting. And, uh, and really what you see at the end is a guitar that's very, very close to the, the unique guitar that you're going to build uh, and all the inlay options as well on there. So, um, so that's a really, really nice process. Um, but, uh, but then, so it goes from the, you know, the 3D to, to here and, uh, and we use a 3D builder to build our stock guitars. So we'll go in there and we'll, we'll design a guitar and, uh, and then that's what we'll physically build. So, you know, so that's why I say even our stock guitars are custom, you know, no two are the same, you know, this is a, this is a guitar built for stock and um, it's a, a very unique piece of uh, olive ash uh, the black carbon and that inlay and you know there's not going to be another one that looks exactly like that ever again you know it's a unique piece of veneer a unique combination and uh, I love the inlays yeah yeah the Celtic knots are, are kind of a signature of, uh, of our guitars but um, yeah so so that's uh, that's how we get to here, and um, you know. But as you see, we we have a, a wide variety of guitars. You know, this is the Virtual, which is our our hybrid between uh, acoustic and electric. Um, you know, it's uh, the guitar we use the tagline. It's uh, acoustic body, electric soul. You know, so it's an acoustic bodied instrument, but it's uh, got Fishman Fluence humbuckers. So it's a full electric guitar and a very versatile electric guitar. But on top of that. As well. Yeah, so on top of that, it's got the piezo, so six individual piezos. Um, because you've got six uh, individual piezos, you can trigger MIDI of that as well. So, uh, so you've got a 13 pin out, so you can take it to a, uh, a Roland um, GR55 or SY1000 or something like that. Um, so uh, it makes it incredibly versatile. You know, you can get just about any, any sound out of this. And the really cool thing is that you can blend them all together. So you've got three individual volume controls and, you know, the magic is, is starting with something that is, uh, you know, giving you a, a, an analog sound and then adding on top of that, you know, some of the, the process MIDI sounds and, you know, just layering it up. It so, just makes like the perfect studio guitar or even stage because you can do uh, it. Yeah, I mean, so if you're on stage with this, you're going to be playing your acoustic parts, your lead parts, your electric, you know, your piano if you want, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, um, yeah, very, very flexible. So it uh, it really is kind of that one guitar. If you're stuck in you know stuck in a desert island, that's probably the one guitar that you want to have with you, uh, as long as you've got power and uh, a GR55, <laughs> you know some other bits. But you know, first and foremost, we're an acoustic guitar company, and uh, the X20. This is uh, our our best-selling guitar, and um, it's sort of dreadnought size guitar, but with great ergonomics and, uh, and ergonomics is one of the things that we're very much known for. Mm -hmm. Carbon allows you to mold a guitar in pretty much any shape you want so why not make it the shape that you want it to be. Um, so things like the asymmetrical side here, um, it's a very subtle line but really affects how it feels when it's when you're sitting down playing it. It just, your knee just sits perfectly at the right angle. Uh, rather than sitting straight across, this puts your knee at an angle, you know. so. You know, you don't sit with the guitar straight. You generally sit with the guitar at an angle. Yeah. So, uh, so that's so been small details. Small details really that make a big difference. And the neck access as well. Uh, there's yeah. No heel. So heelless design. So if you're typically, if you you know, the heel is there to create strength, but with the carbon fiber process, because this is all linked and connected, this actually creates like a uh, almost like a uh, a T profile here. So this actually creates an awful lot of strength. Um, in the carbon and uh, and it gives you access right up into the upper frets you know so you've got 24 frets there and you can reach the last one The other things that we're known for is uh, is our more unusual instruments. Um, so uh, 
So things that you're not going to find in a, in a guitar store every day, uh, like, like that, like these heart guitars. So, um, yeah, when last have you walked into a guitar store and found a harp guitar? Um, but a uh, beautiful instrument and something that really shows what carbon fiber does very well. You know, it's a, it's a very complex shape, um, so we can mold that complex shape very easily and, um, and a lot of tension on the top. So, you know, we can build a guitar that's got a lot of, that can take a lot of tension, but it's still very responsive. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we, we do quite a few harp guitars. And uh, and love doing them, even though it's a you know a real niche world. Even more niche is a harp ukulele, and uh, this is a, a tenor ukulele with uh, with four extra um, sub strings, and uh, and that's just a lot of fun. Um, and you don't just make guitars either; you're you're making basses as well. Yep, uh, acoustic basses. And uh, again, I think this is a product as well of. Uh, just chasing down what carbon does really well. Um, again, the ergonomics are a huge part of this. It's a very, very large body, but with the ergonomics, it's uh, it's actually very manageable and comfortable to play. But uh, but that large body gives it the big sound, the big tone, mm -hmm. and uh, it just looks gorgeous as well. So um, so yeah, acoustic basses are a big uh, part of what we do. Uh, double neck guitars. Uh, like a Chimera, you know, so if you're going to put 18 strings on a guitar, carbon's a good material to do it with. And um, so that's a, a beautiful Royal Ebony on there. And uh, and then 12 strings, um, as a percentage of our sales, uh, you know, 12 strings are, a, are, are quite a high percentage. Um, and uh, I, I believe very firmly that carbon fiber is the ultimate way to build a 12 string guitar. Uh, tonally, it gives a, a, the perfect tone for a 12 string. Uh, just that nice, bright, ringing resonance with a great balance between b uh, bass and trebles and mids. Um, so just, yeah, really full, great sounding 12 string, but um, with great action and playability. You know, we can, we can set up with a, a lower action on this. Uh, you know that it's gonna stay. You're not gonna be tuning the thing continually. Uh, you know, a, a 12 string that stays in tune is definitely a nice thing. <laughs> yes. Um, and a beautiful top on that as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's green quilted maple. Um, so quilted maple with a transparent green over the top. The green carbon back and sides. Here's a, a slim body 12 string. So uh, really slim body with a custom Crevo humbucker and uh, and piezos. We have the little amicus here, which is uh, which is a very cool instrument. This is um, like a short scale 12 string, so it's an 18 inch scale and uh, it's tuned up to D, so it's basically the same tuning as if you put a capo on the 10th fret. Okay. And uh, we kind of say that it's the mandolin designed for a guitar player. So uh, so you can play it just like you know, normal guitar positions, but um, gives you that mandolin kind of tonality. So that's a little look around there. So whenever the guitars come in here, then we'll do a final quality inspection, pack them up. And, uh, and that's direct to the customer. And then ship them direct to the customer wherever they are in the world. You know, we, I think we've sold to over 55 different countries around the world. So they, they go into all different corners. The USA is probably the biggest part of our market. But uh, we, we can ship a guitar anywhere. Well, thank you, Alistair. Uh, thank you for the tour. We loved seeing Emerald Guitars. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying one out. Yeah, certainly. By all means, take a few minutes and, uh, and try a few guitars. And you can check Emerald out at Emerald Guitars. Emeraldguitars.com is where you'll, you'll find uh, all our world and uh, 3D Builder and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, you can find us on all the regular social media channels, you know, Facebook and Instagram and all that as well. So that was the factory tour. Stay tuned for an interview with Alistair where he describes how he built a guitar for Steve Vai and... We've got a guitar to demo on the channel, so stay tuned for that, subscribe, and make sure to like the video too. See you next time. Bye-bye.